like credits. They, they promise something, like posters, they promise something, you know? As for me, uh, credit sequences are sometimes more important than the movie. I don't know, you know, because they present the picture a certain way. I tend to uh, get impatient with the title sequences that are unimaginative, that are just shown up with shots of people driving and going in their house. And I think in that case, don't do that. In that case, put white on black, put some music over it, it's even nicer. It's much more honest about it. Then get the story started because you're wasting story time. The thing that I had heard about were the sketch drawings that you did when you were a kid. Oh, yes. Yeah. I was eight. Eight or nine. And I started playing around with frames. And the frames for me were moving frames. Although, of course, they were still. You know, but they were moving in my mind because then the next image would be this, the next image would be that. I did a lot of them. I threw a lot of them away. And then when I was about 11 or 12, I think I started earnestly in a, in a bigger way. And I was fascinated by the biblical spectacles or the spectacles of the ancient world. I was framing especially learning how to use wide frame. And then I would do some of 133. I would do others in normal. So storyboard. Storyboarding, yeah. I didn't realize what it was, but yeah, they were movies to me. They weren't comic books. And they weren't movies, but there was something in between. Westerns were your favorite movies. Yeah, I liked Westerns a lot. And I think a lot of it had to do with the fact that I was here in the city and uh, loved the idea of horses and loved the idea of open spaces, to which I would probably never get to see. Although I was not physically made for that sort of thing, to live that way, I had, I guess, certain dreams about it. What would a Martin Scorsese Western be like? You know? I, I don't know. There were possibilities. I would love to maybe try something on a mythic scale again about the West, rather than ultra-realistic. Something, rather than revisionist, I, I would like to try to see what made some of these people take and a sense of honor, some sort of code. Because being there, part of the frontier, dealing with death and life every second, is, it makes a person act a certain way. Some personalities came out of the West. I'm interested in those personalities. Mm -hmm. When were you in the seminary? Oh, just uh, when I was about 14. Just a preparatory seminary. Mid-50s. 50s. 56, 57. One doesn't realize, that, you know, one doesn't need to become a priest, or doesn't need to have a third or fourth person to be able to talk to God if you want to do it. Direct communication. Making up the first short films uh, that I did at NYU, that's when I decided that uh, I would probably fare better what I wanted to do, making movies. But it, I didn't set out specifically to say, well, I can put whatever emotions or passions I had for priesthood into filmmaking. That happened. How did your parents react when you first started making movies and finished completed projects, the early projects, Boss Carbert, and Main Street? Main Street was. It was, you know, an ordeal. My father saw it the night at the New York Film Festival, and his first reaction was never again. Of course, he had the same anxiety I had, sitting through, are they going to laugh here, are they going to be nervous here, are they going to boo this, or are they going to be against that? Did they react in any way to how violent and rugged and in many ways kind of unconventional those films were? Well, my mother was concerned that that night, for example, the New York Film Festival, when she came out, somebody said, ah, that's your son's film. She says, I just want you to understand, we never use that language at home. <laughs> we never use that language at home. Which is true, we never did in the home. It was never used. But in the street, that language was used. That was it. Two elements I like best about movies are the sense of motion and performance. I love the way the camera moves. I love, I love the cut from one moving shot to the next, or a cut from a moving shot to a static shot. The light comes second to me. I don't say it's not important, but usually the inspiration is always the point of view of the lens. And sometimes when it all comes together on the set, and especially when it comes together on the cutting room, at a certain point, you can actually feel it go through your, your body. It's part of you. It's like it, it just seeps out of your body. You become you become the film you're making. Why every time when I pick up an interview with uh, an actor, and I all say, young and old, I would love to make a movie with Scorsese. What, what do you think? What do you think? What do you it's think crazy. it is that they're talking about? I don't know. It's they, true. They haven't worked through, right? Okay, well, I've seen a few, but they haven't worked with me. How do they know? Maybe it gets to a point where they think I'm very, very good with actors, so they come in and they do their best mm -hmm. without me asking. I think what I try to do is create an atmosphere which they can try anything. As long as we're talking about the same movie in the same scene, we'll be okay. I cover a certain way with camera, I do certain things in cutting, I, I try to have an actor 
come out as best as possible.